All right, everyone, in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the three components of an affair. And I think that this is an extremely important conversation to have because oftentimes when I find myself sitting in front of couples, I play the role of a referee because often there are uh, differences in terms of how they view things, different perspectives, different ideas. They are as far as the East is from the West in terms of agreeing upon what constitutes an affair. And oftentimes they get caught up in these words. So some like to use the term cheating, others infidelity, others adultery, because there are behaviors associated with each word. So for instance, if, if I cheated on you, it's because I had a one night stand. But if I was in an adulterous affair, it means it was more of a long-term, full-on relational type of uh, betrayal. And so if we get caught up in dissecting and fragmenting and, and differentiating behaviors with certain words, what we're ultimately doing is we're minimizing the impact of the betrayal or we're choosing to maximize the impact of the betrayal depending upon what side of the betrayal you're on. And so to avoid all confusion, uh, the, the fact is whether it was a one night stand, whether it was an emotional connection that did not result in sex, uh, whether it was a porn addiction, uh, whether it was a cyber sex, whether it was a full on six month, one year, five year, 20 year, uh, relationship, it is all ultimately the same thing in terms of the impact that that has on the spouse once they discover what it is. It's a betrayal. And so uh, the betrayal typically has three components to it. Uh, the first component of an affair is what we will call secrecy. Secrecy is a major, major, major component. If there is no secrecy and your partner is aware of what you're doing, now we're talking about something different. We're talking about an open relationship. Uh, we're talking about something very uniquely different. But if you're hiding it, if you're keeping it, if it's a secret, if it's deception, then that is one of the components of an affair. And people will go to all lengths uh, to hide what it is that they're doing. Uh, the reason why people are deceptive is because of shame and guilt, okay? Because of, if this comes out, there may be consequences associated with the behavior, like I may lose my spouse, I may lose my marriage, I may lose my family, and I'm not in this affair because I wanna leave anything. Isn't that weird? Uh, it may sound kinda confusing, but people don't cheat because they want to leave. People often cheat because they want to stay. If they wanted to leave, they would just leave. But leaving isn't that easy. Some people have emotionally left the relationship, though they want to remain in the marriage because of all the benefits associated with the relationship. And so therefore, uh, deception um, is allowing them to, quote unquote, have the best of both worlds. They can be in what they consider to be a committed marriage in terms of all the things that go along with that, finances, lifestyle, we have children together, and things of that nature, but they are still able to feel alive and free and connected to someone in a relationship. And so that's why they hold on to the secret. And so whether they're using fake emails or creating fake social media accounts, or whether they're using burner phones, or whether they're saying that they're going to work early or staying late or using friends as alibis, there's an incalculable number of things that people do in order to hide a secret and to be deceptive. It's interesting, I talk to people all the time, I'm involved in forums, I have conversations, and yet there are new technologies that are coming out that allow people to hide their truth. So if you are uh, deceiving your partner, if you are giving false impressions, if there's an omission of truth, if you are flat out lying to your partner, that is, that is an example or a component of an affair. The second component of an affair is what we will call emotional involvement. Now this is where it gets kind of tricky because some would say, well, it was a one night stand. I didn't care for this person. I didn't like this person. I didn't love this person. And so I want to draw a distinction between being emotionally connected to and a feeling or an emotion that you experience in the affair. They're two different things. So there's been an evolution of infidelity. There was a time when affairs were very transactional. So either I'm paying for sex or listen over there, I'm crossing a boundary to come over to you to engage in a transaction uh, and then I come back on the other side. Uh, but now because of 
technology, uh, social media specifically, and because of uh, the workforce, how men and women are now working together, those two major breakthroughs have allowed for more male-female interaction. And so we're in close proximity to one another. We're engaging in conversation. We're spending more time together. And so uh, we're moving from transactional affairs to relational affairs. And oftentimes these relationships start out as what we would call platonic. But because there aren't clear boundaries and borders and parameters that we have in our relationship, it's easy to wind up going too far. We call them close call friendships. And when I'm spending five minutes a day communicating with my wife, because in the morning I leave and I'm racing off to work and I'm saying my quick goodbyes. And when I come home from an exhaustive day of work, I'm tired and spent and I'd rather veg out on TV or read a book or scroll through my phone. I'm not spending quality time with my spouse. Yet I go to work every day for eight to 10 to 12 hours spending quality time, having deep conversation. So whether it's work, or whether I'm serving a ministry along with someone, whether I'm frequenting a particular location like a gym or a club, and I'm coming in contact with a member of the opposite sex that I'm engaging in conversation with, whatever the case may be, I'm forming and developing these relationships. And these, uh, think about it, a relationship is the ability to relate, meaning there's something in common that draws you two together a common like, a common passion, a connection. And as a result of that, it develops into an emotional connection, thus developing into emotional entanglement and then can lead to an emotional affair. And an emotional affair is when your heart and your mind is connected to that person. And as a result of that connection, it can lead to a sexual affair. It doesn't have to, but it can. So if you're wondering what's worse, emotional affairs or sexual affairs, it really depends. They are just as bad for different reasons and the impact on that spouse can be just as great. So that's an example of being emotionally connected and tied to someone. And so most people try to minimize that, oh, they were in love with that person. But if they have butterflies, if they have that feeling of, of newness that you have when you first start a relationship, if you're longing for conversation, if at night you're secretly texting, if you're in great anticipation of a conversation, of a connection, of any interaction with that person, that is an example of a strong emotional tie or affair. That could be love. But if not love, if it's not love, it doesn't make it any less damaging because there's something that you have with that person that you probably do not have with your spouse at that particular time. This is the difference between loving your spouse and being in love with another person. And so the in love feeling is emotional. However, um, if you do not love, if you don't have strong emotional attachments for that person, there's another type of emotional involvement that you receive. It is the emotions that you feel as a result of this affair. For instance, even if it's a one night stand, when I'm engaging in a one night stand, am I doing it because it's not pleasurable? Am I doing it because I don't like it? Am I doing it because I hate it? No, I'm doing it because it brings me some form of physical, emotional, mental satisfaction. So if I can experience that in a one night stand, imagine what a casual sexual relationship with someone uh, feels like. I have, a, I have an understanding. They know I'm not going anywhere. I'm committed to my spouse, but yet we come together and we have an arrangement. So there's something that I gain from that experience. There's a feeling of freedom, a feeling of newness, a feeling of electricity that races through my body. There, there, there is a feeling of, of I don't know, a, a passion that I once had that I no longer feel. Think about it. When you first get in a relationship, there's two things that draw you in. Physical attraction, emotional desirability. Now that you feel like you don't have that in your marriage, you're going to now experience that with someone else. So I feel, so in essence, the affair may not be because I'm searching for another person. The affair may exist because I'm searching for someone inside myself who I've hidden and suppressed since I've said I do, or I'm longing to meet who I've never met before that has never come out. And this affair allows a different part of me to come out. And I like who this person is. And I'm in search of that person and I wanna experience that person. This affair allows me to do it. So the emotions that I feel as a result of this act, 
it is what causes me to do it. That is the second component of an affair, emotional involvement. The third component is what we would call sexualized energy or sexual energy. So it's quite clear that if you're in a full-blown affair, whether it's a one-night stand, long-term relationship that's sexual, there's a sexual component to it. But what if there is no sex? What if it's just emotional? What if it's just inappropriate conversations? A lot of times, these conversations are sexualized, right? So we're talking about what we would do if we could do, but we won't do because we can't do. And so therefore, they just remain energized, sexually energized relationships. And so the reality is when you think about affairs, a lot of times it's not just about the sex, but it is the longing for. It's the anticipation of. It's the, de the desire to experience. And all of those pieces and parts make up for a sexualized energy. So whether we're being playful and we're flirtatious and we're sharing pictures and, and, and talking about uh, the nature of sex or actually engaging ourselves in an actual experience, it is all sexual energy, okay? So if you are trying to determine what you are involved in, if you're minimizing the behavior, or if your spouse is maximizing the behavior, if you're getting caught up in whether this is a one night stand, um, whether it's an emotional affair, whether it's a full blown affair, if it has these three components, component number one, once again, uh, is what we would call secrecy. Component number two, emotional involvement. Component number three, sexual energy. If those three components fit into your behavior, you are in an affair, you are in, uh, involved in infidelity, you are in a cheating relationship. Uh, and so there it is. So if this video was helpful for you, do yourself a favor and subscribe to the channel. Also visit our website at couplesacademy.org and set up a free discovery call today.